it really is amazing to see how Magnus Carlsen combines the strategic wisdom of the great Steinitz and the tactical and lead and development abilities of Paul Morphy into a single game, or I guess for the more modern-minded, maybe a tall plus a Karpov. His opponent in this game is Simon Agdestein, which is who was his trainer, and I believe was the best player in Norway before Magnus eventually overtook him. And this game really is the symbol of that moment when he did overtake his mentor and teacher. This is the 2006 Norway Championship, and it's the rapid playoff. And I want you to watch the way Magnus basically uses his strategic control of one square to then parlay that into a huge lead in development a la Paul Morphy. It's quite a sight to see. I hope you enjoy the game. Let's begin. Simon Agustin has white, and he begins with the English opening. C4, Magnus with black plays knight to f6. Knight c3, e5. Uh, white is playing to control the d5 square. Black is putting some pressure on d4. Knight f3 and knight to c6. And this is known as the English four knights for obvious reasons. The four knights are developed. And here white plays e3. This pawn at d3, uh, d2 can go to d3 or maybe even later d4. Basically, white's really playing this like a reverse Sicilian, maybe a Scheveningen or even a Khan uh, structure. And Magnus plays bishop to b4, threatening to double the pawns of white on the c file by playing bishop takes knight. And the main move for white here is queen to c2 so that the queen can recapture if uh, black were to take the knight. But instead, uh, Grandmaster Agustin plays knight to d5, uh, removes itself from that threat, and also threatens to grab the bishop pair himself uh, at some point. Uh, the main move here is e4, immediately hitting the knight at f3 and clamping down on this d3 square, which is the square Magnus is playing to control, but he doesn't play that just yet. Instead, he plays bishop to e7, and white can grab the bishop here, uh, and get the bishop pair, but black gets a nice lead in development. Having said that, after d3, white has a huge plus score from this position, uh, playing with the bishop pair. But in this game, white plays a3. His intention is to play b2, b4, then develop the bishop at c1 to b2 and place it on this nice long diagonal. That's uh, the goal for, uh, for white. But then Magnus plays e4, and we can see him laying claim to these central light squares particularly d3, and he does so with tempo by hitting the knight at f3. That knight comes back to g1. Uh, Magnus castles. He could play knight to e5 also, but castling was played. And now queen to c2. Uh, Grandmaster Agustin is trying to put some pressure on this e4 pawn. He'd like to capture it if possible uh, because it's very uncomfortable uh, for white. Magnus plays rook to e8. To add some further defense to that pawn, the bishop at e7, maybe it could tuck back to f8. Knight to e2 is played by white, and you can see how, how white wants to encircle this pawn at e4. He wants to take the knight that's at e2, move that to g3, take the knight at d5, move that back to c3, and that way both knights and queen will be aiming at this pawn at e4. Uh, knight to e5 is played by Magnus, and this further clamps down on this uh, square at, uh, at d3. Now, knight takes knight is played because I, the knight at this moment is, he can't take the e pawn because it's defended by the knight at f6. So he plays knight takes f6 with check. And what he's doing is removing the defender of the pawn at e4. Uh, after bishop takes f6, now, queen takes e4 would be a big mistake here. And here we begin to see the development side of Magnus's threats. In this position, what Black would play is d5, giving up a second pawn for a lead in development. Um, if queen were to take the pawn, then knight to, d knight to d3 check would simply be the end of the game. Uh, the king would be forced to d1, then knight to f2 check would force the king and the rook game over. Uh, if he takes with the c pawn, though, which he would need to do, then bishop to g4. An incredibly powerful move, and you can see the development in this variation. Rook, all three minor pieces, king safely castled, versus one knight on e2 and a king in the middle of the board. Very Morphe-like development, and the threat here is actually knight to f3 check. That's the idea of bishop g4, revealing the rook's threat 
on the queen. So the pawn at e4 can't be taken yet. Knight to c3. So he adds a second attacker to threaten to take the pawn that way. And Magnus goes ahead with d5. He's used control of d3 to get a strategic edge. And now the development comes. That Paul Morphy like not worrying about pawns, to just get pieces out as quickly as possible. If that pawn is taken with the knight, then bishop to f5 with a tremendous clamp on the position for black. If knight takes, bishop check, queen takes, and you can see just a huge clamp. The queen can go to g6 to put pressure on g2 and further clamp down. Of course, the other rook can just come over. All pieces developed, half open files down the center of the board. Black would be in great shape. So white takes with the pawn instead, but Magnus goes ahead and plays bishop f5, just like in the variation that we saw before. Uh, white's best shot is probably just to play b4 and develop the bishop to b2 here, but instead he goes ahead and grabs the pawn. He says, okay, now's the time. I think I can get away with taking the pawn at e4. Uh, he may not have seen Magnus's next move, which is a very hard move to see. Really stunning. It is the computer's uh, top choice. Um, I believe, but uh, bishop h4, really something. First of all, he doesn't want white to take the bishop at f6 with check. That's a nice bishop. Uh, the bishop at h4 puts pressure on f2 that's quite difficult to deal with. Um, and you can't play g3 here because then the knight pops into f3 with check and it's just a slaughter. Then the bishop takes on e4 and the game would be immediately over. So this bishop to h4 move, very strong, putting pressure on the f2 square. Um, d3 is probably black's, I mean, white's best, but after queen takes d5, you know, the other rook is coming in, and black just has a huge lead in development. It's hard to believe white would survive that position. So instead, uh, Grandmaster Agnestein plays queen to a4. This does put some lateral pressure on the bishop, although the bishop is currently defended by the queen. Uh, at d8. What he wants to do is take take the knight at e4 and play it to g3, which you know, hits the bishop at f5, and maybe he'll have time to consolidate if he's able uh, to do that. Queen takes d5 is played by Magnus. If he plays knight to g3 now, then just bishop takes and rook a to d8, and again we get this massive Paul Morphy-like lead in development, where only white's queen is developed. His king is stuck, is stuck in the center, and every single piece of black's is beautifully placed. No chance of survival. Uh, so instead, knight to c3, which is a double attack. The knight attacks the queen. The queen at a4 attacks the bishop at h4. But there is a way to protect both pieces. Retreat the queen back to d8. Saves the queen. Defends the bishop. And now d4. And it looks like white might be starting to untangle. He finally... Got that pawn developed, but it turns out even with the pawn at d4, the d3 square is still far too sensitive. So Magnus plays knight to d3 check, and now because of this bishop at h4, if the king moves, he'll actually lose that f2 pawn, which means white is forced to take that knight with his light squared bishop. Bishop takes knight, bishop takes bishop. And at the cost of a pawn, uh, black has the bishop pair, white cannot castle, and black has a lead in development. Uh, so white plays bishop to d2 so he can castle on the queen side, since he can't castle on the king's side because he cannot castle over check. So bishop d2 is played. So now Magnus has a target. He knows where that king is going. He wastes no time. b5, immediately attacking on the queen side. White doesn't want to take that pawn and open up the b file for black's rooks. So he plays queen to b3. And now queen takes d4 is played by Magnus. This actually was a slight imprecision, as it turns out. Uh, the better move here was uh, bishop to c4, queen c2, and then queen d4. And the reason is this. In the game, after queen to d4, black could have played queen to d... Oh, excuse me, white could have played queen to d5 and gotten the queens off the board. Black still would have an advantage, but it wouldn't be as great as in the game. But instead, white goes ahead and castles long. Uh, and gets his king out of the way. Here, queen to c5 is played by Magnus, pinning the knight and preparing a5. And actually here, uh, 
Queen to b6 was slightly better for the same reason as the last move. After queen c5, white could have played queen to d5 and gotten uh, queens off again. Um, but instead he plays g3, trying to kick this irritating bishop at h4, which was threatening the f2 pawn. And now Magnus does not allow queen to d5. He plays the intermediate move, bishop to c4, making sure white cannot play that move anymore. The queen goes to c2, and now bishop to f6, a very powerful dark squared bishop aiming right at white's king side. If knight to e4, trying to put pressure on this bishop, uh, Magnus has enough of a lead in development. He doesn't have to worry about material as much. He could just chop that off. If the queen takes, boom, bishop to d3, discovered check, and black would win the queen. So knight to e4, trying to kick that bishop away is not possible. So instead, white plays king to b1, just moving that king over. But now a5, the pawns march, threatening b4. f3, white tries to increase his influence in the center a little bit, but is it too little too late? Rook a to d8, and now black's army is fully mobilized. The rooks are centralized, these bishops are ready to go. King to a1, Magnus plays b4, kicking the knight away and threatening he wants to open up that long diagonal for the dark squared bishop. Um, knight to e4 is played now with the knight supported by the pawn at f3, but the situation is basically the same as before. Uh, Magnus goes ahead and takes the knight. Now, after queen e4, there's no uh, win of the queen like in the previous variation, but the same move works very well, and he plays it. Bishop to d3. No discovered check, but look at the placement of these bishops, how they just just completely attack this white king. The white king is, is in big trouble, and every black piece is involved in the game. So here, if a white tries to just move the queen away, say the queen to b7, then say bishop to b2 check would win instantly. The king takes queen c2, king a1, bishop c4, and there would be nothing white could do to stop checkmate on the following move. Queen to a2 mate would be unstoppable. So in that case, white tried to counterattack and plays rook to c1, attacking black's queen. Black goes ahead and calculates that even with queens off, his position is just as dominating. So he goes ahead and plays queen takes c1 check, bishop c1, bishop takes queen, fe4. Now, material has equalized, and it look, may look like white is finding a path to survival, but Magnus has looked deeper. First, he plays pawn takes a3, taking advantage of this pin on the, uh, the b2 pawn from the bishop at f6. And white basically can do nothing to stop what is coming. Um, he played rook to f1, then rook to b8, builds up uh, huge pressure on b2. Um, h4 is played in the game. Magnus plays h5. He doesn't have to play h5, but it's uh, basically he's just taking away possible moves from white and giving his king a little breathing room. Uh, rook to f1. And then bishop to f5, attacking the pawn at g3, and keeping the bishop on this nice diagonal, of course. We don't want to move the pawn there. Rook to g1 and f6. And this pin is such a problem for white uh, that, believe it or not, he resigned in this position. And let's see exactly why that is. Uh, let's say rook to h1, rook to b8, piling on. To this pawn. And if white defends with rook to h2, obviously at some point black could even take this pawn, but he's not worried about that. What black would do is actually take on b2 with check, and then all the pieces get liquidated on b2 through exchanges, and this king and pawn endgame is easily winning for black. White has to chase down these pawns on the queen side, and black just munches all the pawns on the king side and easily wins. A beautiful game where Magnus used po positional and strategical play, the domination of the d3 square, and then used that to get a huge lead in development and beautifully attack his opponent's king. I hope you've enjoyed the game. See you again soon at Chess Talk. Goodbye.